Hey guys, what's up? I'm Justin. And I'm Richard. And we are MLB Baseball Blogs. Richard, who do we have on the show today? Uh, we have uh, Atlanta Blaze prospect uh, Mike Jones on. Uh, he's currently... Mike, are you starting out the season in uh, double A or are you going back down to A? I'll be starting uh, in double A. As of now, I'm on a disabled list with the, the double A team, so I'll be starting there. Uh, okay, well, uh, wow, on the disabled list, that sucks. Uh, uh, what happened? Yeah, I got about a couple more weeks and I'll be out of here, so it's not too bad. So, Mike, we're going to ask you a couple questions. Um, Richard, would you like to start off with our with a couple questions asked, Mike? Sure. I'll, uh, my first question for you, Mike, is uh, you won the uh, the Rookie League Championship down in uh, Danville. Was that your greatest pro experience? Um, yes, I like to say it was, um, up in Danville, you know, we had, you know, a great fan base, the coaching staff was great, we had a great bunch of guys, um, on that 09 crew, and, you know, we just gelled as a team, uh, pitching was unbelievable, and we were able to get timely hits, you know, throughout the season, I think we finished with a 47-21 record, and, um, you know, we were sweet Elizabeth and, uh, the Twins in the, the championship series. And it was definitely a lot of fun getting the, getting the championship during that first season. Yeah, going back to that pitching staff in Danville, uh, you played with Julio Terrain. Uh Now he's a highly talented prospect in the Brave system. Was he always that good? Yeah. From, from the first time I saw him, I knew he was, a, he was just... His, his, he's good, but the crazy thing is, is that he's so young. I, I believe he's only 20 now. And for him to be that advanced the pitcher at the age of 20 is just, it's just unbelievable. And he has a um, you know, great command of, of three pitches. And uh, I believe he's working on the fourth now. And uh, I mean, it's just a matter of time before he's in Atlanta. You know, one day he'll, he'll be that, you know, that age. Probably just by young one one day. He's that good. Yeah, I, uh, I can just tell. Uh, I've watched, obviously, I've just seen this guy... Uh, some spring training and stuff, and I'm really looking forward to seeing him. Uh, any questions for Mike? Yeah, Mike, got a couple questions here for you. Um, what is the key to stealing bases? Um, there isn't really one key. Yeah, you have to you know study the pitchers, and that starts when you're in the dugout watching the game. You have to watch that pitcher, know what his what his we call it his uh his trigger, what his first move is, what, what, what's the first thing on his body that moves, whether it's his foot, his knee, uh, maybe he's a leaner, maybe he'll lean a little bit before he goes to the plate. So you, you, have, to, you have to pick up all those things when you're in the dugout. Um, me and a, you know, a couple of guys, we, we started, you know, taking each pitcher and breaking them down and keeping that throughout the year because we, we'll see the same pitcher, you know, five and six times, maybe more season. So, you know, once you go into about the third or fourth time taking this picture, we already know what he does. We know that he's a, you know, a one fourth in the plate. So we, we have to get these things going. And that way from the beginning, first end, you know, if someone gets on base, we know we can run. And um, then Lynn Jones, the, the base running rover and outfitter rover here with us, he goes through this a lot in some point. I would say um, before I got hurt, I probably had Know, early work base running about five times in probably a week and a half. That's how much they, how much emphasis they put on base running and, and stealing bases, especially with the guys that can run. Yeah. Um, going back to your little league times when you're a young kid watching baseball, a uh, couple questions on during on that time. Um, who is your current or Pat's favorite MLB player? Um, I want to say. MLB player would probably be Ozzie Smith. Um, my favorite athlete of all time is Deion Sanders, though. Huh. But my favorite you know, yeah. baseball player would be had to be Ozzie Smith. I grew up playing shortstop, and you know I just I just love the way he played the game. Yeah. Um. So would you can say that Ozzy admired you to play baseball? What's that? So would you say Ozzy admired you to play baseball? Um. I wouldn't say that. 
my 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 dad was really the one who you know really got me in baseball. Um, but I mean, just watching Ozzy, I I definitely wanted to play like Ozzy. You know, he's a great defender. Um, I mean, he's a pretty good hitter too. He has the speed. That's that's kind of the way I wanted to you know mold my game around. And, you know, and and that's the way I grew up wanting to play the game. Yeah, go. Going back to the Deion uh, Sanders comment, uh, I did a little bit of research, and uh, you said that you're a more football and basketball guy. Um, uh, you're, you're like I think you're five eight or something like that. Were you unable to become, you know, go to the next level in those sports because of your like your uh, physical attributes, or did you just choose baseball over the? When I graduated high school, I was um, you know, 5'8", 145 pounds, and there's nobody in the, in the NFL or, or the NBA at that size. So, you know, uh, right. the odds were you know, better to play baseball. Uh, I was playing baseball since I was four. Um, so, my 11th grade year, I sat down football and basketball and just stuck with baseball, and, um, you know, I think I made the right decision. Yeah, uh, yeah, definitely. Uh, um, all right, last season you went between uh, A ball, high A, and double A. Uh, you hit 15 home runs and stole 22 bases and hit for a 262 average. Would you consider yourself more of a power hitter or a contact hitter? Um, I would say more of a contact hitter, although my stats don't really show that. Um, yeah, I'm really working to that contact hit that I, I should do in that, that typical leadoff batter. Um, you know, the power was, a, was definitely a surprise to me. Um, I would love to have more um, stolen bases and, and a higher average and definitely working to cut my strikeouts down and you know, get my, my walks up. That's that's definitely one of my, my goals for this season. But, you know, all in all, I'm, I think I'm more of a contact hit and not really a power hit or anything. Playing this here in Mississippi is a much larger field than um, Myrtle Beach was, so I think some of those power numbers will go down. But you know, I heard there are a lot of doubles and triples to get out there in Mississippi, so we'll see. Yeah, uh, you you mentioned Myrtle Beach. How was that switch going from Myrtle Beach, this nice area, to Mississippi? <laughs> um, it, it's definitely a a jump that. You know, I have to get used to, but I've kind of done it before. Um, when I was in school in Miami at Miami Day, after I got drafted, I had to go to Danville. So that was definitely a, a coastal shot going from the big city like that. Yeah. To, you know, a small town. But, you know, playing in Danville uh-huh. and Rome, um, I'm used to, you know, playing in a small town. And those towns get some, you know, they get good crowds at their games. So they're a lot of, a lot of fun to play in those small towns. Uh, you mentioned Miami Dade, where you you know you went to college, well, ju- yeah, junior college. Uh, you completely destroyed the ball. You hit uh, 452. Uh, and you led uh, you led the league in home runs. Was it the competition that was too lax, or were you just that good? <laughs> um, honestly, yeah, you guys think that you know juco ball is is a uh, you know a step below Division one, but. I, I really don't think so. I played Division One ball in my first year at North Florida, and um, yep. there, really, there really wasn't much of a, a difference in the, in the competition, especially within our uh, our conference. Once we got a conference, conference player, you know, there was some legit pitching. Um, we did play some teams up north that, you know, and they were coming down, and they, they were, it was their first game, so they, you know, they were just coming out of the snow, and. Um, those teams, they struggle when they came down to play us, but, you know, as far as teams in Florida and, um, you know, in our conference, there, there were some legit teams and legit pitching, and there were even some guys that, you know, they're even playing Division One ball now, some guys are even playing pro ball. Yeah, uh, yeah, definitely. I'm actually kind of surprised that the uh, Division One and uh, Juco ball um, uh, competition isn't much different, but, uh, uh, so you got any more questions for him? I kind of soaked up a lot of time there. <laughs> I don't really have any more questions. I you pretty much covered all the basic questions that you asked him. So, Richard, do you have any more questions to ask him? Yeah. Uh, I mean, 
mean, I, I'm not too. Uh, oh, okay. Uh, when do you see the twin, uh, the Twins, the Braves finishing the season? Uh, do you see them making the playoffs, wild card, division winner? What do you think? Um, I, it's early in the season. I'm looking to see right. and play with those guys. And, you know, I wish them the best of luck. And, you know, I know they're going to have a great season. Um, and they're all a bunch of great guys. As of now, you know, I can see them. Hey, I wouldn't be surprised if they won the NLB. I'm just throwing it out there. The Phillies the have, yeah. you know, have a great you know, pitching staff and all that, but our pitching staff is pretty good. We have, um, you know, some experience in the bullpen. And, you know, guys like Chipper, he knows how to lead the team to the playoffs as he's done in the past. So don't be surprised if they win the Um, You know, I think worst case, but that'll be a wild card dream. And I think we have what it takes to, you know, get there. All right, well, uh, yeah, that's all. That's Mike Jones. My questions there. That ends up Richard's questions. So, so Justin, you're all done. I'm all done. Guys, Michael, Mike, thank you so much for your time, man. No doubt, man. We'll Good talk job. to you soon. Have a good one. Thank you. Um, we'll talk to you guys soon. I'm Richard. That's Richard. I'm Justin. We'll talk to you guys soon. Enjoy your weekend. Watch some baseball. Michael, thanks again. Have a great weekend, bro. And he's out, so uh, we'll talk to you guys later. Enjoy your weekend, and have a great week.